you launch Logic, it's going to scan for all your audio unit plugins. If you got like a Waves bundle, or like me, I have Waves, the complete bundle. I got my native instrument stuff, and I also have a whole lot of universal audio stuff. So it took a while to scan all of my things, my plugins, and so we good. Now, once you get here, you have these different templates. You have an empty project, which is self-explanatory. There's nothing in it. You got factory templates that Apple has graciously created for different styles of music creative people. You have a hip hop template, you got an electronic template, a songwriter template, a music for picture template, a multi-track template, and an orchestral template. These templates have been pre-configured by Apple based on the style of the music that is going to be created by the person. And as such, they gave them proper names, right? Beneath that, you have a bunch of other details. If you don't see it come up when you launch Logic, you can click over here to the details box. You can click this little arrow and drop it down, and it gives you more details about the session you're about to create. You always wanna have the musical grid checked because if you don't have it checked, you can't set the tempo to the session. You can't tell it what key signature to play in and any of that stuff. So you wanna have that set. That way you can put the tempo of the session that you're creating or you can just tap it in there just by clicking the mouse over the tap button. You can tell the key signature what key you want the keys to play in. You can tell it you either want it major or minor. You can tell it that. You can set the time signature. You can set your input device. I happen to have two of them. I've got an Apollo, a Universal Audio Apollo, and I got an NK3. For this video though, I'm gonna use my Apollo. I'm also gonna set my output device to the Apollo. Now you can mix and match. You can set your output device to something totally different. I've never done that, so if you blow your studio and stuff up, don't blame me. I'm gonna leave my sample rate set at 48. And so lastly, we're gonna leave the sound format the surround sound format at 5.1, which is your standard surround sound. So we're gonna go up here and we're gonna click empty project. This loads up, it's gonna drop down a menu box. This menu box is the instructional box that tells you what kind, or it's asking you actually, what kind of track you wanna create. You can create a software instrument track, you can create an audio track, you can create a drummer track, you can create an external MIDI track, or, a guitar and bass track. We're going to create an audio track. The input device is my microphone, my CV12, Aventone CV12 microphone. You have 32 mono inputs, and then you have your, your one plus two, those are your stereo inputs. And you can change these to call them whatever you want. Hence, I called my input one CV12, so I know that input one is always the microphone, right? So I'm gonna select that. My output devices are the same. They're stereo output devices. Or you can go all the way down to mono and select a mono output device. You can also name these as well. I chose not to name output one and two because I know that my main studio monitors are running through outputs one and two on the back of my Apollo interface. So I'm gonna leave that just as one and two. These options down here, if you want to load multiple tracks, you can just change this number to like four and you can click ascending. That way it will load those tracks in ascending order. If you deselect it, it won't do anything. We can load a default patch if we want. We can choose what that default patch is. We can create this track and have it open up a library, which we can do that as well. We don't wanna do that for the purposes of this. And the same thing with the output channel. You can load it in ascending, you can turn on input monitoring, or you can load the track with the record button already selected. So all you gotta do is just hit record and go. But we're gonna load just a standard audio channel and leave all of this standard. And down here again, it tells you your input and output devices. So we're gonna click create. Voila, we created a simple audio track. Now I know this ain't new for y'all and this is probably boring, but we'll get there. Again, this video is for newbies. 
drag and click here, and that's how you adjust the height of the track. Right? I'm talking in my microphone, so you can probably see the level going up over here. If I wanted to record myself, I could just hit record and, and then hit play. See, I'm recording myself talking to you guys. This is a UAD, Apollo Rack, and a tutorial for YouTube. Let's play that back and see what that sounds like. See, I'm recording myself talking to you guys. This is a UAD, Apollo Rack, and a tutorial for YouTube.